Hello everybody and welcome to another game kind of playthrough setup that I'm going to do. This is for Dice Command. This is a game designed by Sam Cristal and Tyler Holman of Ejected Planet, uh, a game company that they've made. They're based out of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And this game, as of the time of this recording, is live on Kickstarter. So I think it's live until around the end of October, if not a bit later. So in Dice Command, each player is going to represent a military general and their army. They're going to use units, or dice in this case, to build and advance an army, all while carefully managing their resources to continually fuel their war machine and win the battle. So you can see here we have the game board that the game comes with. Uh, we'll flip these over here. These are research facilities, and uh, kind of go through how that impacts the game. There are a total of 11 of those. We'll shuffle those up if I can find the shuffle action, randomize them. These here are um, special cards that you can get that will have an impact on the game. Each player starts with five dice in this cool little bunker with uh, the beds, but you have the ability to earn more dice, which represent can represent troops and tanks and research and all kinds of things. And then we have um, little action boards that we're going to be able to assign things to do, whether it's financing or headquarters or research and development. And there's some tokens the game comes with as well. Credits for money, um, nuclear research to really uh, finish the game in a different style, or these little um, mine-like tokens. All right, so let's take a look at the rule book. We'll walk through it with you so you can see this up in hand. Each player would take a side, take a barracks, choose their army color, take 10 units and four command cards, and give each player a reference card. They're gonna put all of their command cards in front of them face up, so their command cards are the four things that I showed you. But then they're going to have a tactical advantage deck and draw three cards that are going to be face up. So if we look here, I already shuffled these. Each player is going to have three of these cards. And for the sake of uh, gameplay here, we're going to have these all face up for you on this side of the table. So we have um, Precision Airstrike, Morale Boost, and Tactical Retreat is the black player's option. And then the green player will have three cards of their own. Now they can acquire new cards as the game progresses, but this is what they start with. Uh, but not only that, each player will also be starting with two options for a research facility. So again, we'll pull up the rules so we are kind of walking through it together. It says here, shuffle the facility cards, deal two to each player face down. They choose one card, put it next to the board face up, and then set the others aside. So that means that um, we already shuffle these up. This player would get two, this player would get two, and then they're each gonna pick one. So for example, this player sees an aircraft carrier. They could deal three damage to all units in a single row or column. You can see there's little dice spots for it. Only ace fighters need apply to do this carpet bombing, or they have the established front. They can roll a reserve unit, force deploy it behind or beside this location. So um, those, we'll say that they're going to grab the aircraft here. So that gets removed from the game. We'll just uh, slide it over there. And then this player had the choice between a munitions depot or a basic research facility. Let's say they'll do some research. We'll flip that over and get rid of that. Those are out of the game. So each player starts with that. So you can see when you start a game, there's some variability to begin with because out of um, 35 cards, each player only gets three to start with. And out of um, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 uh, research facility cards, each player only gets one. So there's diversity already in gameplay. That is basically how we set up. Determine a start player, second player gets an extra credit. So uh, how much credits does the, uh, we each start with three credits, but let's say the black player is going first, then the um, green player would get one extra credit to throw into their barracks, so to use at their disposal. And that is how fast you can set it up. Again, of course, it was all pre-set up for me using Tabletopia, but uh, even if you pulled this out of the box, I could see setup time not taking any more than five minutes. Just shuffle a couple of decks, lay out your boards, and away you go. Tokens would be in a pile on the side or in a tray in the box. So there we go. Let's move on to the next page. 
four player team setup so this game does play three or four players three players like a free-for-all four player is a, a team version where you're working together so that could be interesting but we're just gonna for the sake of simplicity stick to two players for this video so we'll get, go through you can see that there is a game board it's double-sided so you're only seeing one side of it right now but the other side has a different kind of a map layout and image kind of looks like the four player setup there which is cool three to four player board free-for-all and um, oh, the two-player board is only half seas, so the four-player board you can see expands it to double. So we're only looking at half a board right now, uh, but you can see how the big one looks there. It describes how the board is broken down. So at the either side of the board is the enemy zones, or I guess it's your friendly zone if it's your zone, um, and that consists of a deployment section and or in the front line. So you can deploy on the first line. Um, that's where you're going to keep your troops to start with and then you'll move them forward um, and then there are facility markers uh, if you get to one of those you can control a facility so actually the facility cards go here and here so if you look at that if you have a die staying on location 2 you're in control of this facility and if you have a die on here you control the aircraft carrier. That's how that one works. Um, I'm sure there's some extra rules in there that I'm not fully explaining, but you can see how that adds some strategy to decide who's going to control what. Your dice play a different role as well. They, they're they going to play a role um, literally when you roll them on your turn, but they're also going to represent tanks. So if I have this on a board, if I deploy this at some point, then um, as I uh, rotate through it. One, two, or three would be light infantry, and a four, five, or six would be a tank, um, or heavy, heavy infantry, I should say. Uh, and then the armored division, if you stack them, it's the combined value of the dice. So if I had a six and a one stacked on one another, that'd be a seven value tank, is how that works. So they use the dice in some interesting ways to, for the, the light, the heavy, and the armored division. I like how they manage that dynamic and that mechanic. Uh, the barracks, it's basically a rolling tray that houses your units, your tokens, your credits. It's your um, home away from home. And then it also comes with a reference card here that reminds you of what you should be doing on each of your turns and some of the basic advancement rules. So always good when a game provides you with some kind of a reference tool um, in case you're just cracking the game out after a long time of not playing it or um, first time playing it, it's a good visual aid. As you go through gameplay, there's going to be six phases consisting of preparing, rolling, assigning, resolving, advancing, and refreshing. So let's uh, go through a couple sample turns again. We're not going to play a full game, but I just want to give you a sense of how the dynamics of this game work. So first we prepare. If you control any facilities or command cards with start of turn effects, we would resolve them now. So facilities are here. Um, command cards are here. Now we haven't played any of these, so these do not have start of turn effects, but um, there are cards that will. So some are one-time effects when you play the card, and some will be long-term effects. Let's see if we have any examples here. No advantage. None of those are, but in here there are uh, repeat bonuses that you can get. So the first step would be to resolve those if you had any repeat effects. Next we get to roll. So um, we said black will go first. So let's say we grab all these dice. Um, I think there is a way to grab them all, but I'll just roll them all independently just for fun. So we're going to roll all of the dice. So there we go. We've got four, six, six, four, one. And so what happens on this turn is we are assigning. We get to place units credits and research tokens from our barracks onto any actions we want to use during our turn. Um, use command cards if we wish, tactical advantage cards if we wish, facilities if we wish, so everything really happens in the assign phase and then further on we'll resolve. So what am I allowed to do? Well, let's take a look um, on here. Deploy and advance. That's an explanation there. So we have these five dice, we get to decide what we want to do with them. Maybe I want to finance. So if I put a die in here, I can assign units to generate credits. If I assign one die, doesn't matter what the value is, I get one dollar. If I assign two more dice, I'll get another dollar. So for three dice, I'd get two dollars. So your first credit is cheaper than your second credit each turn. 
because you can do each of these actions each turn. And you see here uh, a shiny icon to upgrade because if you choose to um, research for nuclear and then invest that nuclear, then you should be able to flip this card over if I unlock it. Then I can flip it over and you'll see that it becomes a much more valuable finance card. So one of the strategies in the game may be deciding what particular um, one of your areas you want to unlock. So if I, if I unlock this um, and flip it over to my headquarters, I could deploy in advance units, but if I upgrade, I suddenly have the ability to force this unit on top of an infantry unit I own on a facility, so I can kind of um, have more impactful turns. And each of those have advancement mechanics, so love the fact that you can evolve as you wish on four different paths or multiple paths. All right, so um, let's say we want to deploy. So what you would do is um, put this here, deploy in advanced units. And if we check out the rule book, I mean, this is the main mechanic of the game is getting tanks on to the, the board. So let's read about that, deploying. Um, deploying allows you to send your units out onto the battlefield. During the assign phase, assign a unit you want to deploy and then deploy the action after you've assigned all your dice. So that's why you put it on the card first. You're not going to resolve it right away. You're going to place all of your dice and then resolve them in whatever sequence you choose. Um, oops, I'm zooming in there. So let's say we're going to um, finance here. We'll put a one there. Maybe we want to deploy a heavy infantry. And you can see here we can deploy and advance as well. So what if I want to deploy and advance and just really go all out right at the beginning charge um, this team's not going to research they're going to conscript so they're going to put this here and again die value doesn't always matter so that's my die placement now um, you can see here you can invest um, sorry i put that on the wrong one conscription costs money i could um, take this for i'm going to invest here so the way the credits work is they go on the circle for conscription. There are certain cards that will cost money or dice or both. But if I put a die here, it says I'm going to conscript units from my reserve into my barracks um, during the resolution phase. If we look at my cards, I can also invest in those. I could do a morale boost, tactical retreat, precision airstrike, but there's nothing to deal damage to at this time. Force deploy an assigned unit. You may increase all other deployed units by one that looks like a good later game card so maybe we're going to um, see if you want to invest in research you have to do two dice right away otherwise you get nothing so this extra die almost looks like it's not going to uh, help me much but let's read about deploy and make sure I'm doing it properly the value of the unit represents the type of unit it will be on the battlefield. So whatever you put on the deploy card will become that unit on the battlefield. So that's good to know. Um, so maybe so we're... I don't have to deploy this die, but it doesn't make sense not to. Unless I want to save it for next round. Let's say I'm going to save this for next round. We're going to try that option. And now we're going to resolve. So we'll resolve from left to right, top to bottom. First, we're going to finance, assign units to generate credits. So this guy here, he has earned me a new credit. So that'll go onto the barracks. And then this die goes back into the barracks. It might happen at the end of the turn if we look at our um, turn sequence, probably. Refresh, discard, draw, resolve. Assign units return back to the barracks, assign credits, and research tokens are spent. So yeah, that guy earns some money, goes back to the barracks. Conscription, we lose that dollar that we invested. And what we do is we spend that dollar, and we get a new dude in the barracks. Newly conscripted, welcome Uncle Sam, says Uncle Sam. Headquarters deploy an advanced unit, so we get to deploy this into whichever one of these squares we like. We'll pick this one. And then here we can deploy this guy as well. And then we have advance, so let's read on advance. Open this up. So we have, um, whoops, scroll through, you get to see the rules as we play. So we have deployed during the resolve phase of your turn, take the unit assigned to this action, place it on an empty space on your front line. 
If it's an infantry unit, you can instead place it on an open space behind any other one of your units on the battlefield. So that's good to know for infantry. Um, you may never deploy into an enemy zone. You can't deploy a unit whose face is the same as one of your units already present. Ah, so that's good to know. I would have had to put that there and that there because you cannot have two sixes. So they kind of limit you from overpowering your enemy with all heavy infantry. Advance. Assign any value of unit from your barracks to an advance station. So I don't know if the, the number does not seem to matter. I return it back and I can move the unit according to the unit's type restrictions. All right. So the unit's type restrictions are in here. This is a heavy infantry. It has no special abilities. It can only move forward, forward left, or forward right. It cannot move backwards. Um, always progressing forward. And light infantry has an advantage. They get to move up to two spaces because they're lean and mean, but they take damage um, like it's easier for you to hit them. So this I would get to advance one space forward or to the right or left. So we're going to advance that one space forward. All right, and that uses up the advanced die. Look back at our rule book here and see if we've resolved the turn. Go back up to... Uh, so we have prepared, we rolled, we assigned, we resolved those assignments, we did our advance action as one of the resolutions, and then refresh. So if we look through what does refresh do, discard any tactical advantage cards that were used, which there were none, draw new tactical advantage cards into the face-up area, shifting older ones. So how do you draw new ones? If none were used, this turn, one new card is drawn, and the rightmost tactical advantage card is discarded. So that's good to know. So I think I made one mistake when I was doing the setup, and it's always good to play and, and figure that out. If we look at the setup section again, um, my apologies for the uh, dizzying scroll. Um, two to each player. Ah, so we're going to take these back, flip them over, so these ones actually don't go into play. Each player does not get three cards, you get three shared cards. So that adds another dynamic of um, knowing that if you don't play a card, your opponent might, and therein could be a danger, because if you really don't want to take, let's say, this precisional airstrike damage, you may use it even though it might not be very beneficial to you, just so your opponent can't use it. Otherwise, it sits there and it's ready for them to use. So I like that. Okay. So we have resolved player one's turn. Player two, green, would then roll their dice. So roll, roll, roll. They've got no um, effects outstanding to use right now. So there's all their dice. Now they have to decide what they're going to want to do. So let's say they're going to go heavy into R&D. They don't care about the advancing troops. They throw two ones onto R&D. And so what do they do? Um, earn and apply research awards to end the war. And if they... Um, are able to get five tokens on here they can upgrade but we'll do that in a bit we're going to finance we're going to cons to, and we're going to finance again so this person they're not interested in in starting the war with troops they want to take a different approach and start by investing so here we go um, they're financing for two credits so they throw one two credits into their barracks just like that that resolves these ones here so when they resolve that these go back to the barracks to be used in future turns we look at conscription we were going to pay um, i'm going to say we're going to pay one and then we're going to pay two more we would have done that during the uh, assign phase investing in the future so we conscripted twice one there and then two dollars for another one so then we can get two more guys into our barracks, building up. Headquarters, we're not deploying, but then we're doing research and development. We get one research token. So that goes into our barracks to be used when we wish. We've got a nuclear bed there, and these dice go back in the barracks. So this player decided, no, I don't want to advance. I just want to invest in my future. Nothing for them to refresh, so we go back to the black player's turn. And they say, oh, well, I see an opening. It's time for me to invest some more. We're going to roll the four dice that are remaining in the barracks and start this turn off. So we have a five, a five, a four, and a one. No point doing an airstrike. Morale boost. 
I could increase, but I'm not going to bother. I could return deployed units I own from the board back to my barracks to get money. We don't want to do that. We just want to force our guys out. So we're going to make, we don't have a five deployed yet, so we are going to deploy and advance one five dude. We have a four, and we have a five already, so if we want to advance, we can do that. Um, we're going to deploy a number one, the light infantry, and we will finance to get a credit. All right, we're not gonna use any of those cards yet because we don't like them. So now what are we gonna do? We're gonna resolve our cards, so assign units to generate credits. So we assign that guy, we get a credit, but we're gonna spend a credit that I would have put here to get one more guy. So basically the, the credit that we got, we're gonna spend to get one guy. I'm not going to spend two more because I want to save that in case I want to use money for a card later. Then we're going to deploy this five right here. We're going to deploy this one right here. And then we can advance one troop, one or two spaces. So I could advance this guy two spaces because he's the light infantry, not heavy infantry. So, haha. All right, everything is back. We didn't do any nuclear, didn't do any cards. So it returns back to. The green player's turn. Look at all the dice they have to roll. So they're going to start by rolling their dice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven dice rolled. They're going to be conscribing again because they want to. Um, they can only conscribe that one last die. They're going to send some guys off to R&D, get ourselves some more nuclear information. They're going to finance, get some more money, really not worrying about troops at all, just building, building, building up, finance, and then we can finally deploy because we have enough dice that we can actually do all of that and deploy a couple troops. So round one was build up, now we can do all this. So start with financing. For that, we get a dollar, or credit, I should say. It's not a dollar. Slap that in there. For these two, we'll get another credit. Um, but I'll just take that credit from here. For this credit, we conscribe our last guy. So conscribing is no longer a benefit to us. If we unlock this, let's see what happens if we have to upgrade it. Force deploy a value one unit from your reserve. So I'm uh, not sure if we need that right now. Headquarters deploy in advanced cards. So we will deploy this six, we will deploy this five. Oh, I think I accidentally deployed that last turn. Oh, these should have been over here. So I could conscribe an extra die. So we'll spend two more money and we'll conscribe another one of those dice. So those will be in there for later on. And then research, we get another nuke token. Dun, dun, dun. All right. So maybe next turn we'll assign some nuke tokens. But then this player's turn is over. We go back to the black player's turn. Um, they've only got three dice to roll, so they'll roll them. We've got a four, a one, and a two. Decide, hey, I'm just going all out. I'm deploying everything. I'll deploy that two. I've already got a four and a one. I'm going to use the four to advance, and I'll use a one to finance and I'll spend a credit to conscribe all about the army here. So we finance, we get a credit, put that back. That credit that we spent or that we get, I'll just take off this board because we used it conscribe. Get another troop. We will deploy our two and we will advance. Whoopsie. Let's advance. Um, and that's why he has those pasted to the board. Paste advance any unit doesn't have to be the four units so I can advance any unit we'll advance the six forward all right um, you know what let's advance the the one unit forward two spots one two and again hard to see on the digital board but in the real life the game board would stand out quite a bit more um, done all of our actions we didn't try to uh, do any R&D so our turn is over and we'll flip back over to the first or the second player, the green player. Um, forgot to take these back. So I'll show you in the rule book how 
nuclear research goes, or whatever kind of research that is. Scroll up and take a look at that. So researching allows you to obtain research tokens to upgrade your command cards. You can assign research actions to gets you one token, and then the base action on an upgraded side of the research and development works the same as a non-upgraded side, um, but will have special effects. And if you really wanted to, you could um, try to get five atomic upgrades. And you'll see here if we uh, unlock this and flip it over. At the start of your turn, you can exchange one research token to construct one unit or gain two credits. Or if you put three nuclear tokens there, three research tokens, you can put two units behind enemy lines. So that's a sneaky way to get an, an advantage. In this turn, we're going to put a research token there, which means we should be able to upgrade. Right? Assigning a research action. Doo, doo, doo. Yeah. We'll just uh, make sure I can do that during my assign phase. So, doing that properly. Assign units, credits, and research tokens from your barracks. Yep. We're going to assign that one there, and we're going to assign this one to financing. And then we have all these dice to roll. So we roll all these dice, and, and then we would assign them and continue on. Now what I do want to show you is a little bit about combat. Uh, I want to make sure we don't forget about that. And then we'll kind of wrap up because I don't want to go through the full game with you. Uh, you can, again, see that on other videos and um, people will explain it much better than I can in probably much shorter time. But should we get to a point of combat, we have rules of engagement here. So the resolving an engagement, when a unit advances into an occupied enemy unit space, they will engage in combat. So we'll do an example of that. Let's say that this six was way up here trying to get into that research station and this five was on the research station. That will be the example of combat. So the six is going to use an advanced maneuver to advance into that square, thereby resulting in, um, let's just pull it up here, bad connection, figures, hey? We lost it. Pull that robot up again. It is not working. So, if we take a look at it, when we um, are trying to resolve combat, the enemies will interact in different ways. Obviously, higher valued units will be stronger than other valued units. It looks like I cannot reconnect, so I'm just going to wrap up this discussion to explain my thoughts on the game. Now I played this a full game with Sam, one of the developers of the game, and had a blast playing it on Table Topia with him. So uh, if you if you enjoy that kind of thing, these military strategy games, this has dice placement, it has card use, it has um, mitigation strategies, just a lot of different things happening in this very dynamic two-player game. So I enjoyed the the game experience that I had with him. Um, I have backed it for a game myself, supporting a local developer here in Alberta, in Canada. Um, but beyond that, I think it's a game that I would enjoy even without knowing the creator or having played it with him. Um, it just puts the dice to very good use and has so many dynamics for replayability. So I can, I can picture this kind of micro-miniature dice chess type of experience with some dynamics in there of card play. Um, the randomness really isn't that random when you think about dice. Dice games often have randomness, but um, because you're placing the dice and many of the actions don't require the, the dice to be a specific value, um, it's not really luck-based at all. It's, it's a lot more strategy-based than it might look like on the surface. Um, and the components for this game are high quality. I've seen the pictures and images from different reviewers. Uh, so even though you're only seeing a digital experience here, uh, the game itself has some great quality to it. So. Um, check it out on Kickstarter, see the video, see what they've put together, watch some of the other high quality videos out there from quality producers. I'm just a, a rookie in this field, 
but I have fun uh, experiencing sharing games I like and this is one that I just wanted to make sure I put my two thoughts in and share it with you so check it out and thanks again for watching another show by fundamental games